So we don't know. Now, there's also a laser uh, by BioLase, which has a lateral laser. So they can place it down in the root canal and they can do the laser procedure. That seems to show good scientific studies with it penetrating deep enough uh, along the sides of the teeth to prevent the um, bacteria from surviving at that moment in time. So there's different things. Um, uh, people have to do some of their own research because we're still learning on this and it wouldn't be fair as a member of the uh, International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology, even we don't say, get your root canals removed. We don't have enough science to know that with certainty. But if you can prevent them and find someone doing biomimetic and holistic dentistry, for sure biomimetic dentistry, you want to try to do that because of getting ending up needing root canals can throw you into a gray zone that becomes uh, weirdly murky. Okay, thank you. So you, you mentioned uh, dental cavitations. Um, is that the same as a cavity? Is that what most people would call a cavity, or is that no? It's just I don't know why they just call it dental cavitation. So it's it's actually stuff going down in the jawbone that can show an infection that was there and it just, it healed over with some scar tissue maybe. And, but there's some, some, maybe some toxic sludge in there. Sometimes it has heavy metals in it. Uh, it's like almost as if when it was healing and, and going into its final uh, closure, et cetera, it's pulling everything in sort of like, a, I don't know, like a black hole or something, you know? And so, uh, but the majority of time when it's cleaned out, it has junk in it. So uh, a good surgeon or dentist, they can clean that out. They'll clean it out and flush it out. And they'll also use either ozone or PRP or things like that to help the body to rebuild it and uh, flush it out. Because mechanically, we can remove it, but um, uh, microscopically, you can't get all of the, let's say, uh, infected areas or broken down cellular structure unless you start taking away too much bone and that's uh would be contraindicated because uh you, you start running out of bone it's not good and uh, you also mentioned uh ct scans um are things like cone i, I, I don't know if, it, if you use the the cone beam ct scan cone beam, uh, yeah oh, and then the you know like uh x-rays are, are are they something that people should be concerned about as far as the radiation or, or are they safe you know, I, I, I'm not an expert in that because in my office, I don't do the cone beams. I, I have a couple surgeons that do all the work for me, but um, my understanding is that they're all digital. So because they're digital, they're 70% uh, less uh, standard radiation um, uh, types of x-rays that were done uh, 10, 12, 15, 18 years ago. So it's relatively fast and easy. And one of the remedies that uh, patients can take afterwards too, is they can take some niacin, not niacinamide, but niacin for a few days afterwards, and they'll get that sunburn flush from it. But apparently it helps um, push out uh, radiation and uh, sun damage and things like that. You don't do it for three or four days. You don't want to do it long-term because it'll start depleting other uh, B vitamins. But um, niacin seems to be somewhat of a remedy. Some have said some things about I think calcium helps with it too. I, I, I don't know. I'd have to do more research on that, but I know the niacin seems to flush it out a bit. And does biomedics go into beyond dentistry into orthodontics at all? Is that something that, uh, that they're trying to do in that field as well? You know, I think it's, it's a buzzword. Biomimetic now is becoming a little bit more of a buzzword. So, you know, people are starting to use, Oh, it's biomimetic or something like that. I, um, so I don't know, I guess there could be a way to do orthodontics. That's even more conservative, but orthodontics in, in, in and of itself is quite a conservative, uh, field of dentistry. Think about it. They're just repositioning, moving teeth, uh, expanding archways, uh, to create better airways. Um, so it's a pretty naturally biomimetic, uh, alteration that's taking place. So, um, but you know, sometimes I hear, Oh, these implants are, these are biomimetic implants or something. I'm like, how, how do you make a biomimetic implant? I don't know. I mean, the only way I know would be it, it would have to, uh, you, we'd have to clone and regrow someone's tooth 
and we'd implant it back in there complete with the nerve, right? Right now, all we can do is we can, if someone loses a tooth in the, in the front, we can take a middle tooth in the back, take it out, do a root canal on it, implant it in the front. And then after it takes there, we can reshape it a little bit in place of an ear on it because the, the root systems are similar. Well, that's cool. But then you end up with a root canal in the mouth. So how biomimetic is that? You know, once a person needs a root canal, the biomimetic aspect of the tooth kind of goes down because it's no longer like a natural tooth. It's, it's lost its whole pumping and hydration station. So given that, that uh, the biomimetic term has become a little bit of a, of a, a buzzword, how does somebody know that they're going to a, an authentic biomimetic uh, dentist like yourself? Now, there's a really good question. So um, they have to check the credentials out, check, kick the tire a little bit. And then there's an academy, the Academy of Biomimetic Dentistry, AOBMD.com or .org. Um, and, and I've been on the board there for a long time and helped develop the protocols for the uh, dentists who join that they have to show where their level of training is how much they've done and they can, they can get, um, you know, they can, they can study all the way up to uh, becoming a fellow in the Academy. So generally if they're a fellow based on the protocols that I and the past president put together, if they pass through that oral examination, then we know they can actually do biomimetic from uh, basic to advanced uh, procedures. The thing that we don't know for sure is do they do it routinely? Are they is that the way they always do it? Now, one clue would be if you call an office that says they're biomimetic and then they say they also do crowns, uh, you can query them on that because oh, you do crowns like pretty routinely, or is it just to replace crowns? Because the only crowns that I do are replacing old crowns. I'm not, I've probably had to do three crowns in the last five years uh, just because the tooth was so broken, so decayed, there's nothing left to, you just have to build uh, something from the gum straight upward. But, but generally I build it up with the composite material. It takes about an hour to hour and a half. And then what we put over it is a combination. So I'm not just sticking some hard uh, thing over the tooth, which will break down too easily. So they can ask them, do you do, does your office do crowns? Good. Is it just replacing crowns? Oh no, we do crowns. That's, that's kind of how good are you guys at crowns? Oh, that's generally what we do all the time. You know, that they're not truly, uh, fully biomimetic. Uh, one of the, one of the listeners following the program here, they could also ask, how do you do your, uh, fillings? Are they done in layers? How many layers does the doctor use when he's rebuilding a tooth, right? Because we're proud of it. In biomedic, we know uh, sometimes I'll finish with a, a patient say, wow, that was, we did really good there. We put about 18 layers in there. It's a lot. It is time consuming. If they're a high uh, insurance practice where they, they only see uh, just insurance patients, et cetera. You really want to check that out because they may not have the time to do biomimetic um, procedures. Nothing against the insurance uh, driven practice and things like that, right? It's just that, that the volume can get such that they can't spend the time they need. So another question they could ask is, how long does it usually take to do one of your fillings? And then they say, oh, it's about 15 to 20 minutes then you could almost assume they're not doing biomimetic dentistry. So those are just some parameters because it is true. Sometimes someone will take a weekend seminar and then they advertise and broadcast very loudly that they're a biomimetic dentist. Um, it would be more appropriate if they said they're um, learning biomimetic and trying to do the best they can with it, you know, and uh, when you, when people watch my videos from the free holistic dental course.com They'll see my approach is never to strengthen our position as biomimetic dentists by demeaning the traditional general uh, dentists because they're all working as hard as they can and trying to figure things out. And 
uh, try and take care of their patients the best they can, even the holistic doctors. But what happens is change is kind of hard for everybody and anybody out there. So, you know, they'd have to change their protocol, have to change some of their steps. And it can be time consuming at first, and they can have failures at first if they do it improperly. So it's it's a paradigm shift. But but once they learn some of the protocols and courses and really immerse themselves, it's a game changer for the dentist. It's so much more joyful because we're conserving tooth structure, working with people that want that and appreciate it. And we're not just like a drill, fill and bill type of uh, dental practice. It, it, it's just becomes more customized and joyful with our with our patients as well. So for people who've had traditional fillings done, does biomedics, you know, does a biomimetic dentist look to replace any of that with, a, you know, a, a, a biomimetic filling with the, with the various layers or do they leave well enough alone? And is there a problem with the existing um, fillings that we have? Um, well, I, per, um, I evaluate them and I let, look to see is there stress or strain on the teeth. And then I look at the x-ray to see how sealed do they look. And then I visually look all around to see, are they leaking at all? How are they doing? Um, and then make the call from that point. If they're doing well, they've been there for a while, there's no symptoms, there's no trouble, the bite is good, uh, everything's good. Personally, I leave them alone. Um, and I can maybe put in my computer, let's watch these. They're not I don't think they're biomimetic, but you know, on occasion, even with the great bonding uh, materials we have now, it'll hold the tooth together and bond. The real problem is this though, if the dentists are globbing them in as one piece, I like to say like a piece of Play-Doh, they just jam it in there and put the blue light on. If it's fairly deep, almost always it's going to put stress on the tooth or it will debond. If it debonds, you'll have long-term you'll have micro leakage under it, which means to the bacteria, it looks like the Grand Canyon. They're like, hey guys, come on over here. We got a good place to hide, right? So they're running down there and doing their thing. Uh, it can cause recurrent decay. But even in those, I might say, you know, this looks like it's leaking. If it's real small, I might leave it alone. If it's big, like it's leaking, it's a camouflaged uh, restoration here. It appears that it would hold your tooth together, but it's really not. We should consider redoing that. That's part of my evaluation on it. Of course, uh, if there's any kind of decay or anything like that, obviously it's a no brainer. We, we have to replace it. Okay. Thank you very but, much. But, um, you know, you, you make a, you have a good question there because I, I'll have patients that come in and say, I want to get all my fillings replaced with biomimetic. And, you know, they come in, I look at them and say, well, you know, we can watch this one and this one and this one and this one. They seem to be doing okay at the moment. And, what what about like you know just regular run of the mill problems like people who grind their teeth? How does a biomedic dentist deal with with the damage and maybe helping prevent them from from doing so? Well, it's um, I got this from uh, Doctor John Coyce and Frank Spears out of uh, uh, Washington. They used to have a practice together and uh, they lectured a lot together. Now they lecture individually, but you know there's three reasons besides an accident that people lose their teeth, and one is from gum disease. The others from cavities and the others from a bad bite. Let's say clenching, bruxism, rubbing, whatever words that you want to use. If a person has this heavy clenching, rubbing, uh, bruxism, nighttime grinding, uh, the dentist can see it. We can see the wear patterns on the teeth. We can see if a person's rubbing their front teeth. We can put them together like a puzzle piece and show the patient. If the dentist takes the time and go, look, this is how you rub your teeth. Some people come in and they go, I'm not grinding my teeth. I don't rub my teeth and go, well, something's wearing those teeth down. This is what you do at night. And you, sometimes I've had them go way out, way out to the right side. And like, and it fits perfect where they're wearing it. And they're going, what? I said, that's your habit. I mean, and you're deep asleep when you're doing that. That's why you're not aware of it. And so what do we do in those individuals? Biomimetically, um, if the wear is severe, then you have to restore those, but we would restore those. Like we're talking about if they wore all the way through their enamel, which I have quite a few, many patients that have come to see me, they've, they've destroyed their teeth from this rubbing. Best would be to catch them 20 years earlier and have them wear a nice night guard. 
If they can't wear it, try to make another one. Try to make it on the top. Try to make it on the bottom. Try to figure out a way to get them to wear it. Because if they don't wear it within 20 to 30 years, there's a good chance they're going to need their whole mouth done. Well, if they have to get their whole mouth done, then at least we want to do it biomimetically. How do we do that? We open the bite, very little, create space, and then we can lay porcelain over the chewing surface of the teeth. Also put bonding in on the surface of the teeth, composite to make that sandwich technique so that it's mimicking mother nature. And then we're not grinding down the teeth. You know, for example, I had a young boy that came in from Arizona and he'd been all over the country and everybody wanted to um, do crowns on all of his teeth. He had severe discoloration and some wear problems, et cetera. And I said, so he flew out or I said, no, we can open your bite a little bit and we can restore everything with very, very minimal preparation of your teeth. He's 27, uh, 20 or 30 years from now, he may have to replace some of those. And we want to make sure that he's got 90% of his tooth left instead of 90% gone. Um, also, uh, there's, it's about a 33% chance of root canal when a person gets a traditional crown. So they could have a tooth, no symptoms, et cetera. They have about a 33% chance over a 10-year period that they may need a root canal in that tooth. So why do it? Why not keep as much tooth structure as you can? And if the dentists are out there uh, watching this, just go to the Academy of Biomimetic Dentistry. There's information there. There's You can reach out to me. Uh, there's courses people can learn and do. You don't have to be... Um, uh, so aggressive anymore with our dental treatment. And even if a lot of these crowns are done beautifully too, you know, and, and they can still last a long time, but generally speaking, uh, we don't have to do that. And so going back to the grinding person or a person that grinds biomimetically, the best thing to do is get them in a night guard of some type, uh, maybe adjust their bite slightly. So they're not harming it during the day. Uh, all with uh, minimal uh, minimal concepts of any type of adjustment would be maybe included. If they have severe destruction of the teeth, then you have to look at how do we rebuild those teeth without having to do crowns. And that would be with uh, very ultra thin onlays or ultra thin uh, veneers. And I show that, on my, I show a lot of cases like that on my website. It's just drpaulomalley.com. Mm -hmm.